Okay. Okay. The first step that I'm going to do in making my elbow nigga soup is put a little bit of olive oil in it, seal it. I've already cut potatoes, carrots, and celery. Turn it down a tiny bit. And I'm going to just kind of saute these. It gives it a better flavor. They hold it better in the soup. This is about one and a half cups of baby carrots sliced in half, three stalks or about one cup of celery, and about two cups of white potatoes, small white potatoes that I've just quartered. So all I'm going to do is put them in a little bit of oil, like I said, and just saute them so that they have a really nice um, firmness. You know, you don't, if, if you use certain types of potatoes, like a russet, in a soup, it won't dissolve and disintegrate and fall apart. So, white potatoes have a better consistency for a soup or a stew. I like my potato salad to fall apart, so. We're just going to let those saute. Wow, they're a little big. <laughs> don't season them. Don't do anything to them. Just, just let them saute. And if you want to add a tiny bit of liquid, you can add broth or water. Just a tiny bit. And throw a lid on it while you make your meatballs. That's over a lower flame. It's not very high at all. Okay, so we're going to make our meatballs. These have been um, sautéing over a very low heat for about 10 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and remove them into another bowl so that I can put my meatballs in the pan. Okay, we're going to make meatballs for my albondigas, uh, or meatball soup. It's what I grew up calling it because I didn't know how to say albondigas or what the hell that even meant. <laughs> but I'm taking a little spin off of my mom's and I'm using turkey because turkey's very lean. My daughter hates it, but one of my daughters hates it. But it actually, it's a lot healthier for you than ground hamburger is. And since we've learned about how food's processed, we're kind of trying to get away from certain things. So I have about a pound and a half of very lean turkey meat. And because it's so lean, I'm going to introduce a little bit of olive oil to it, about a tablespoon or so, just to give it a little bit of fat that it's going to need to cook in the pan and not fall apart. Um, I'm going to add a half a cup of breadcrumbs. And you don't have to add breadcrumbs if you're, you're really trying to watch your diet because these do have a little bit of fat in them. Or if you want to make your own breadcrumbs, use whole wheat breadcrumbs, that's fine too. And I have about a half a cup. I actually would say that's almost a cup of chopped onion. It was a quarter of a large white onion that I chopped. I'm going to add that all to my turkey meat. And about three cloves of minced garlic. And then I'm going to add about a third of a cup of rice, uncooked white rice, to that also. And now let's add a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. I think I'm going to add a little bit more, another quarter, so let's make that a half. We have cumin, which I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of that. It's a very strong, uh, overpowering spice that I don't care for too much, but it does add just the right amount when you add just the right amount. And about two teaspoons of salt kosher or sea salt. And some parsley. If you have fresh parsley, use fresh parsley. If you don't, use about a teaspoon of dried parsley. And the trick to dried herbs is to rub them in your fingers to release some of that oil and scent. And then I'm going to 
add one egg, <coughs> really similar to making a meatloaf. If there's other spices that you like in your meatballs, and you have a meatball recipe, use it. This is just the way I make mine. For this soup. When I make Italian meatballs, I don't put in rice, of course. But I do put in practically everything else, maybe with the addition of Parmesan. But This is a soup that, like I said, my mom used to make when I was younger, <laughs> all the time. Especially on a cold, blustery day, it's really good. Very simple. It has potatoes, carrots, and celery in it. And a lot of people like to garnish it with cat sliced cabbage. My mom never really did things like that. <laughs> but as I've gotten older, and my daughter went to a friend's house, and that's how they had it. She loved it that way, so we've done it that way on occasion. Today I'm not. I'm just working with what I have. So this should all be mixed really well. And, you know, turkey is really a uh, sticky ground meat, so... Don't be intimidated by it. Just work it. Okay. And I'm going to make my meatballs. Your meatballs, you don't want them too big. And at this point, if you want to wash your hands and coat them with a little bit of olive oil, that's fine. I'm not going to. They're about, I would say, one and a half inches in circumference. My thumb is about an inch, so I would say one and a half inches in circumference is a good size. I'm going to make all of those. I'm going to brown them in a pan, and we'll show you that when we get back. I've added a teaspoon of olive oil to the pan so that my um, meatballs don't stick. And I have about 18 meatballs, actually, so that's a pretty good amount. I'm going to go ahead and place them in the pan. One at a time. I don't want to overcrowd them because I want to be able to turn them as they brown. You can do this in batches if you have to. I really need to invest in a much larger pan. At some point, I'm sure I will. Um, using turkey meat came about out of um, getting involved in some clean eating. You know, I like the concept of clean eating a lot. I just can't stick with it. You're going to brown these meatballs on all sides. Like I said, on a medium heat. If you brown them too fast and the pan gets really too hot and the meatballs will have a tendency to fall apart. So you want to just take your time doing this. Um, after you brown them all, you're going to just braise them in a broth. It can be chicken broth. It can be vegetable broth like I'm going to use today. Or beef broth, whatever you prefer. So... Once we get these all browned, I'll show you what we're going to do. The soup is going to be super fast to put together. This is probably a 30-minute meal, really. So, uh, you know, if you let it cook a little bit longer and simmer, you know, make it the day before, soup's always better. To stay, the flavor's merry. But this is a great, easy soup you can make in less than less than 40 minutes for sure and have on your table for dinner. Okay, I finished browning my meatballs, and I'm going to put them in my five-quart stock pot, which by all accounts is a very small stock pot, but it, it holds the soup just right. So I'm going to transfer them to the stock pot. And you don't need to drain these. When you make hamburger um, elbow and gosh, you will need to drain them because of the fat. That's one reason that I like um, using turkey. Now the bottom of this pan, I'm not going to let all that yummy goodness go to waste. I'm going to go ahead and add my stock to that, about half of the can to it, and then I'm going to pour the rest into the meatballs. And once the brown bits are scraped up from this pan, I'm going to go ahead and add that to the meatballs as well. Okay, here are the meatballs in the stock. I've added actually a half a cup of water just to bring them up um, to surround the meatballs better. And I'm going to let it sit for, just like I said, not even 10 minutes, and let it simmer. I'll go ahead and raise my flame up just a tiny bit to medium-high heat to get it warmed through. And then we're going to add 
our vegetables, and a tomato sauce. Okay, that, that simmered, simmered for about, the meatballs have simmered in the stock for about, not even five or six minutes. I'm going to go ahead and introduce my vegetables now to the pot. As you can see, it's going to fill up right away. It's like three-fourths of the way full. Or five to six cups of stock. And um, stir it around. Make sure you have you know, a good ratio of liquid. I could probably go even a little bit further with my liquid, and I probably will, because I don't, I, I don't like to run out of broth. <laughs> so I'm going to add a third a cup of uncooked white rice, and that's part and part of the recipe is the rice and the meatballs, and then the rice being added again. And I'm going to add some tomato sauce. That's one can. And I'm going to stir it and see if it gives me what I like. And yeah, that's that's what I do up on right there, that color. I think I'm going to have to add a little tiny bit more water. Just so I can have enough crop to go with the vegetables. So, there we go. Right up to this little bowl. And what I'm going to do now is add some more parsley. About another... A uh, teaspoon of parsley. And crush that in. Um, I do have a, a seasoning called no salt seasoning. It has a lot of great spices in it, and I'm going to add just a little bit of that. Uh, and then I'm going to add some salt <laughs> to it, just because I want to have a nice. I really, you know, my kids are like, Mom, you're putting too much salt. I am addicted to salt. I will admit. And, you know, taste your soup, people. When you make something, if you're not tasting it, you're running the risk of not having good food. Don't tape me. The tomato is there. The vegetable base is there. Now I just need to bump it up with a little tiny bit of salt. Went ahead and added two teaspoons of salt. And I'm going to um, let this simmer until the vegetables are cooked through all the way and I'm going to turn my heat up to about a medium high get it to a boil and then turn it back down and simmer it for about 15 minutes so I'm, I'm thinking this probably took me about 40 45 minutes top to do but if you have your vegetables and everything pre-cut or you make your meatballs ahead of time you can just throw this together really quick so I am going to put a lid on it and show you the finished product. Here's the soup. You add a little bit of lo uh, lemon. And at this point, if you had shredded cabbage, you put a little bit of that on top. I like zapatillo. Zapatillo hot sauce. My dad used to put Tabasco. If you have that, you can. Just give it a little kick. Season it to your taste. And when I say season it to your taste, you add your salt, pepper, whatever you need extra at this point. And there's your albondigas. Mmm, yummy. 